This is Covert Agent Ravage, and you are watching another Mollwave Transformers review. Hey everybody, and welcome to another Malwave toy review. Since I, it's been so damn long since I've done one, I completely forgot how to do my introduction. I'm already off to a good start. So, well, today, I just had a whole bunch of toys that I wanted to review. There were a lot. But there was one, but then I looked at my toy shelf, and there was one toy that stood out. One toy that, above all else, was probably one of the most, one of my favorite purchases from TFCOM. So, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be looking at Beast Wars 2's Moon. Moon is, of course, based off of this old Chinese tale of the lady and the rabbit who lives in the moon. And in the show, Moon and his friend Artemis, who I will actually, I can actually provide a visual aid. Since I'm awesome, I got the box with him, but as you can see, alright, uh, there's Moon right there and there's Artemis. So the idea was Moon and Artemis are the sole beholders of this power known as the Gaia Energy. I, I don't know the full story behind it. Um, oh crap, my battery's already almost dead, huh? You may see a jump cut, folks, you may see a jump cut. Uh, Moon's vehicle mode, vehicle mode, is of course what you would see, consider a rabbit. I'm doing exclamation points, or exclamation points. Herder, <laughs> I are not no grammar. Uh, our quotation marks as this is about, this is not the best looking rabbit you'll ever see. But this is bar none his best mode. I like how, again, I'm just going to use the box as a visual aid. I'm really liking all of the details. And, you know, and you've got a whole bunch of different details. You've got his back. You see the fur in his back. Uh, sorry about that, folks. Quick little jump cut. Someone interrupted me during my review. As I was saying, once the camera focuses, you see the nice little fur details in the head and the back. You see the fur details on the, on the paws. All four paws. That, and he does look very show accurate to the toy. This was one of those toys, when I saw it, I knew I wanted it, but it was too expensive. But I'll get into that. Uh, I also like the ability, since his back feet are, are articulated with ball joints. If I can do this on camera. Now, Moon mostly stays in this mode, so you literally, so... It's kind of uncommon for him to be in... Hmm, hang on a minute. Aha! It does help, however, if you have him in the correct transformation. Just saying. But now that... Anyways, it's now fur on his stomach, the detail. But the point is, with this, with the ball jointed hind legs, he can now stand on his hind legs and articulate with his hands. So, this is how I mostly keep him in. Uh, some sort of a weird position like this. You know, it's cool. It's, uh, it's very cool. I like, the, I like the ability to pose him in both modes. However, there's one thing I don't like. Yeah, the, uh, the vehicle mode and the gimmick for the robot mode are both visible. And I'm actually, I'm not sure if you'll be able to, actually, yeah, yeah, you can, okay. Good, I can actually visualize it. Um, but otherwise, for vehicle mode, I'm going to give Moon a 22 out of 25. The toy really works well in this mode. It's probably one of the better modes, I've se better vehicle modes I've seen in this line. And considering that this line, this, this toy, I'll be honest, it stands up there with Lao Convoy. In terms of vehicle mode, I adore it. Now comes the fun part. I get to transform it into robot mode. Robot mode. 
as I as I said, you want to maybe keep them in this mode because uh, if the box is any spoilers, it's not gonna look good. It looked better in the cartoon though. All right, to transform him, first you want to fold the the uh, front paws up and then fold out these heel spurs. Actually, fold out the front of the feet. His paws become heels. So fold them out, straighten them out. Okay. Now you want to rotate the whole body like this. And then take Moon's head, kind of fold it up, and then take his ears and kind of fold them back. Make kind of a tail. Straighten out the legs. Take his shoulders and just rotate them around. Then rotate the head. And there you have Moon in robot mode. And what the hell is this? I... I... But what is this? I don't even. I'm actually astonished that this is the robot mode. Again, this is Japanese, so I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to judge. I mean, there was probably some, some purpose. I mean, again, I prefer him in, in, uh, rabbit mode, as that's what he's seen, but he has been seen in the cartoon. As I also said, looks a little better in the cartoon. I, I... I don't know. I'm going to attempt to put a visualization of the of the version here. I may not because I'm a lazy asshole who doesn't edit. Um, but articulation wise, let's see. Considering the abomination that we see about in front of us, he does have some good articulation. His uh, his head rotates 360 degrees, and I didn't count it, but it does kind of nod. Shoulders are ha, do have a limited ball joint to some degree. The elbows are ball jointed completely, so you have a lot of articulation with what no with no hand to speak of. Um, no hand articulation, no hand. Uh, he's got a waist articulation, so now he can Beetlejuice. Uh, thigh articulation, ball joints. His knee pivots 90 degrees, and there is no foot articulation, only because there's not really any time you're going to be wanting to do this. You know, it's cool. It's cool. He gets a... I'll give him a 21 for articulation. Or... 21? No, 22. I'm sorry. He gets a 22 for articulation because despite what the robot mode looks like, it's a very nice articulation for the toy. Now, this is one of those few times where Gimmick is actually better than Fun Factor, and Gimmick gets a 19 because of this cool idea. Alright, now, as I said, now I want you to look very carefully. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it, but... <laughs> We're going to have Moon molest the camera for a second. Okay. Okay. Eh, it would help if I didn't put my finger in front of it. Actually... Hold that thought. Okay guys, I'm back and I have the perfect way to visualize this. Okay, so as I said, I'm just gonna put Moon here. Okay, put this behind the camera. Okay! That looks a little better. Okay, so as you can see, Moon is a Viewmaster. So how do you use it is when you want to switch the picture, you just click down on his waist. I'll just have to I'll bring it back in so you can just see it change. Just kinda... Now again there isn't really much way I can show you the actual pictures but I think that's Lyo Convoy. Let me just check. No it looks to be... Oh, okay it's a picture of Moon and Artemis on a you're gonna you're gonna have to take my word for this on a smiley face moon thing with a whole bunch of planets floating around. What the hell? Okay, so not only does this thing have a kaleidoscope, it has satanic imagery. Nice. Anyways, uh, gimmick as I said will get a 19 because of the uniqueness of this toy. And my flashlight fell over. Awesome. Now, fun factor. Yeah, I'm going to give it a 17. 
this is why the toy may be made of mostly ball joints so if the toy pops apart like if a kid pops the joint off it won't break but here's the thing this toy loose can go for at least 90 bucks I've seen it online mint in package like mint in sealed box for a hundred no one no one is going to buy this for their kid at that price if it's any indication I will give you a good scale with I'm gonna give you a good scale here there's generation wheel generations wheeljack standard deluxe size and here is legend is a legends class Leo Prime Moon is a scout sized figure that means that you will be paying for a toy that is normally upwards of maybe twelve dollars maybe sixteen if you're shopping at Zellers you will be paying almost oh math is not my strong suit you'll be paying over five times as much as retail and that's only sixty I'm just saying five because that's as close as I think I can get it I don't want to just spend time using a calculator of course I probably should have figured this out before so that's my fault I digress the point is this toy is worth almost over five times as much as a standard scout class toy the other thing that is interesting to note is this is a Japanese exclusive toy. The fact that I found this being sold at TFCon for 50 bucks. Again, as you saw in the video, which I should actually probably play it just for the emphasis. $50, I was damn excited. So, in total, Beast Wars Moon still gets an 80 out of 100 because the articulation is, is above average. The show accurate model for the, for the rabbit, which is actually while I'm explaining, I'm going to change it into that mode because I don't want to end on a, on a horrible note. The articulation is, uh, is pretty good for the toy. The toy itself, while being incredibly expensive, does look very accurate to the show. It's easy to transform, which I probably should have mentioned, but Scout Class Toy kind of assumed. And, in all honesty, the toy does offer a lot of character onto your toy shelf. Because whenever you look on your toy shelf, you see toys such as, you see your Generations, you see your Dark of the Moon, and then you see this thing. This is a conversation piece, folks. I even recall, I had it at the bar at TFCon, and Proto Man walks up and stops, walks backward, and goes, Oh, Beast Wars 2 Moon, and then keeps walking. You would not normally hear that unless it's a really good toy. So that's why I feel that this toy does deserve the 80 out of 100. Yes, it could have been a little better... Yes, the gimmick probably could have been better, but considering what I've dealt with on this show so far, gimmick is amazing. And as far as I'm concerned, while it is a Japanese-only exclusive, it does fit in quite well with your other Be Beast Wars toys. Wouldn't you say? So, until next time, this is Malwave with Beast Wars 2 Moon, signing out. See you, everybody. アンゴルマエネルギーが悪いことに使われるとこのレーダーに反応が現れるもん